Jothan is a self-conscious Dalit literary text, makes a powerful statement against the oppressive caste system still prevalent in most parts of India. Valmiki backquote's use of autobiography helps him to occupy a vantage subject position from which he presents a Dalit's lived experience. Valmiki's own struggles and success acts as motivation for others to struggle and achieve their goals. Jothan symbolizes the struggle for dignity and human rights and demonstrates that a revolutionary transformation of society is not just desirable but possible as well. Valmiki manages to do three things in his work. A. Uh, he gives a brief description of the physical as well as the psychological space occupied by the churis in the village as a matrix of their social existence. B. He describes, very briefly, the day-to-day -day struggle of the untouchables to arrange two square meals for themselves. At the same time he is able to demonstrate that the economic deprivation of the untouchables is the consequence of the Hindu caste order. C. He chronicles his own struggle to get an education in the village school. His story demonstrates that it is indeed possible for the untouchables, despite the hardships and deprivations, to emancipate themselves by persistent struggle and determination. The first part of this extract, very quickly, paints the subhuman living conditions of the churis in the village. The churis, Valmiki's own caste, lived across the pond, which acted as a natural barrier between the upper caste quarters and the untouchables. It demarcates not just the physical space occupied by the upper and the lower castes, but the two different worlds of existence. The churis exist among filth and deprivation. The description of the basti gives us a sense of the utter deprivation faced by the untouchable community. There is an all-pervading stink and one could see pigs, dogs and children roaming around in the narrow streets of this basti. In short the churis lived in a physical and social space devoid of human dignity, obviously as a consequence of the caste system. Thus Valmiki's early childhood is marked by this utter deprivation and lack of dignity. The social and psychological deprivation is compounded by economic deprivation as well. Though every member of the Valmiki household worked it was difficult for them to arrange for two decent meals in a day. This economic deprivation is also a consequence of the caste order. The churis did all kinds of works for the tagas, upper caste people, and often without pay because they dare not refuse the tagas. Due to their lowly social position they were often abused by the upper castes and made to work for free. They were considered polluted and less than human. Ironically, one could touch animals but not churis. Thus they were regarded as things to be used and abused at the convenience of the upper castes. It is within this sub-human context that Valmiki's struggle for an education begins. The government schools, though officially open for the untouchables, refused admission to them. It was a generous Sevak Ram Masihi, a Christian, who took Valmiki into his open-air school. But after a tiff with Sevak Ram, Valmiki's father took him to the basic primary school. After a prolonged period of begging and cajoling, Master Har Fool Singh allowed Valmiki into the school. It is important to remember that all this was happening eight years after India became independent. The practice of untouchability was very much a feature of this school. The untouchables, there were two more of them in Valmimi's class, were made to sit away from the others. What is heartening though is that the three untouchable children, though from different castes, had a bond of solidarity. Despite the humiliation by fellow students as well as the teachers the three of them persisted and continued in the school. The experience at the school, described in these passages, highlight the cruelty and heartlessness of the teachers and fellow students. It got worse with the new headmaster Kaliram. They were openly abused in the classroom by the teacher and often beaten up as well. Valmiki takes the opportunity to highlight the fact that the Brahmin teacher in their school used swear words on a regular basis. 
This is a very effective reply to the critics who frowned upon the use of swear words in Valmiki's stories. He has tried to point out that when swear words are used in real life by people who are supposed to know Brahma, Brahmins, then it is legitimate to portray that reality in creative writing as a true depiction of lived experience. The experience at the school leaves a lasting impression on the young Valmiki. For instance, the image of the guru, teacher, that Valmiki would remember throughout his life is that of a man who would swear about his mother and sister and who would sexually abuse young boys. However, the turning point for him as well as his father was an especially humiliating experience forced upon the young Valmiki by the headmaster Kaliram, who seems to be a rabid casteist. He orders the frail boy to sweep the school compound day after day. Valmiki suffered this indignity for three days. On the fourth day, his father discovered him with a broom in his hand sweeping the school compound. In one decisive gesture, his father, instead of quietly suffering the indignity, confronts the headmaster. The courage and fortitude shown by his father is indeed remarkable. Expectedly, Valmiki was thrown out of the school. But his father was not going to give up easily. He promised the headmaster that Valmiki would indeed study in the same school and that he will ensure that more untouchables would follow Valmiki to the school. With dogged determination, Valmiki s father, with the help of the village Pradhan, Chaudhry Saheb, managed to send him back to school, thus ensuring that his own son as well as others are not denied education in the village school because of their caste. 